And of course, Jim, uh, Jim Clark's Lotus Ford that won Ford's first Indy 500. And we had four wins at Le Mans, and this is 1967, in the Ford GT40, Dan Gurney, AJ Foyt, and constructed by the one and only Carroll Shelby. The first time that an all-American team, drivers, and an all-American car had won. And my personal favorite, because I was there, is the 21 Ford Motograph Fusion. That's the car similar to the one that Trevor Bain won, the Daytona 500. Etzel and I were there. It marked our 600th victory uh, in NASCAR. What a moment I'll never forget. But the car that started it all is right above me. Henry Ford's own 1901 sweepstake. And Etzel will tell you more about it very, very shortly. I tell you, our winning spirit over the years continues to drive us to get more championships. And if you follow the news, in NASCAR, we are leading in the points. Carl's leading in the cup, Ricky's leading in the uh, nationwide, and we are going after those two championships. In NHRA, we are in contention to get our, sec I mean, our repeat championship under John Force Racing. Mike Nuts here, Robert Heights here, and of course Daska's here. And we're gonna go to Pomona, and we're gonna get another championship. In World Rally, one race to go, Great Britain. We are in contention, win, and we have a chance to win another championship in World Rally. In Global Rally Cross, we won the championship, and in the X Game, three-time gold medal. And of course, in road racing, the Boss 302S, living up to the spirit of the 1970 Boss, Parnelli's right here. We won the GTS championship, and the Boss 302R came in second in Grand Am. So as you can see, we have a lot of excitement in racing, and our job is to transfer some of that excitement on to the enthusiasts, so you can feel it, touch it, hear it. By, and we offer Ford Racing a variety of products, all the way from single parts to race prepared cars that you can get in the car and go out racing, whether it's Cobra Jets or Boss Field 2Rs. Well, I'm going to talk more about those, but before, I'd like to have Edsel Ford come and join me. And Edsel is the primal Ford, the primal force behind Ford Racing. He's the godfather of the Ford Racing program, and he's the great grandson of Henry Ford himself, the one and only Mr. Edsel B. Ford II. Edsel? Well, good morning, everyone. Glad you're all here. I hope you like this display. It's a, it's a great display for SEMA and the guys at, uh, at, uh, at uh, the Ford uh, uh, Marketing Group, led by Daryl Breisha, I think has done a great job in, in celebrating Ford's 100th anniversary in racing. So, to that team and to all the people that brought cars here, thank you all very, very much. Well, it's great to be here, especially amongst old friends. I feel very comfortable being at SEMA. Um, I spent my youth and, and uh, with these people, with all of, all the cars, and so it's really great to be here. Um, and it's also very important to celebrate the 110th anniversary of Ford Racing. It's important because, as Jamie said, the car that you see behind me, along with Henry Ford's vision for how racing should help his automobile venture, is the reason racing is so important to us at Ford. You see, in 1901, my great-grandfather was 38 years old, and his first automobile venture, the Detroit Automobile Company, had been dissolved and was a failure. If he wanted to be a part of the fledging automobile business, and he did, he needed to find a source of fresh capital to put himself back in the public eye and he turned to racing to do that. It turns out that one of the <clears throat> biggest races in the country was taking place just outside of Detroit, Michigan on October 10th, 1901. And the star of the race would be Alexander Witten, the premier automobile builder from Cleveland, Ohio, and motor racing's first American superstar. His entry in the event assured that all the Detroit movers and shakers would be in attendance, even the lawyers. So with just a few months in which to do it, my great-grandfather assembled a small team of people to build a car. As you can see behind me,
Army, it stood high off the ground with 28-inch wheels. It looked like a cross between an oversized baby carriage and a small grand piano. Without a windshield and sitting exposed to the elements, no matter how you looked at it, it looked half-finished. But it had an elegant name. They called it sweepstakes. Being a mechanical engineer, my great-grandfather Henry Ford concentrated on power The engine had only two cylinders and a displacement of 538 cubic inches. Now that's 180 more than what NASCAR allows us today. But believe it or not, the engine in that car only generated 26 horsepower. When the day of the race came, 8,000 spectators packed the grandstands and lined the fences of the one-mile dirt track in Gross Point, Michigan. Thirteen teams were entered from Detroit alone, but the star of the field was Winton, who brought his best car, powered by a 70-horsepower engine. The starting gun was fired, and Winton, as expected, took an early lead. But sweepstakes, while less powerful, was also considerably lighter than its competitors, and it began to catch up. By the seventh lap, Henry Ford was hot on Mr. Winton's tail. And then on the eighth lap, it happened. Winton's car began to sputter and misfire. As the pair came off the fourth turn and hurtled down the front straightaway, Henry Ford made the pass and put Alex, Alexander Winton in the dust. It was a thrilling moment, an historic moment, a moment that identified Ford as a winner worth watching, and it scared the living daylights out of my great-grandfather. After he drove into the winner's circle and into a great crowd of spectators willing to back him in any venture that had involved wheels, the first words out of his mouth were, Never again. <laughs> now, frankly, I love that story. But I hope it also helps you understand why we are so passionate about racing at Ford. Since that day, Ford has hired the best owners and drivers to represent us in racing. And as you know, some of them are here with us today. Carol Shelby, Parnelli Jones, John Force and his team, Robert Height, Mike Neff, Bob Tasker III, who also sometimes doubles as a car dealer in Rhode Island. And Alex Zadius, are you here, Alex? Well, Alex Zadius is the founder of SoCal, and we very proudly present one of his very early vehicles just around the corner, so I hope that you have time to go over and see it. Just as important, 110 years later, we still race for the same reasons my great-grandfather did to showcase our products and technology against the best competition in the marketplace, and then to market that success to sell our cars and trucks. I believe that Henry Ford would be pleased to say, to see what we've done with his roasting program today. We truly are using it with the same vision that he had, and we intend to continue that vision going forward. They always say that a car's windshield is bigger than its rearview mirror. So with that brief look at the past, let me bring Jamie Allison back.